Hola, my beautiful humans. This is Jasmine Castillo, and I bring stories and cases from the people of color community, bringing awareness of murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, two spirits, the LGBTQ community, Asian American, Pacific Islander, black indigenous people of color. These are their stories. So welcome to Hands Off, my podcast. is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, a time to celebrate the collective identity and diversity of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And during this month, I would like to provide additional information for us to grow and to honor the diversity that we have amongst all beautiful people. To educate ourselves, I would love to have my listeners go to the link in the show notes you will have a variety of information from movies to books to a virtual museum that provides history and heritage on Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander culture. I wanted to share this to respect and to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month with you, my listeners. You could grow to value different cultures to see how country benefits from people with various backgrounds. The more we respect and appreciate different cultures, the more likely we will become upstanding citizens in a multicultural society. A witness provided authorities the sketch of a man who was described to be a Pacific Islander, about 30 years old, with short hair and a clean-cut face, but with a huge birthmark on its right side. And due to the time constraints, the authorities decided to immediately release the media. The witness sketch, instead of getting more detail from the FBI or the DPS, This individual was seen behind the steering wheel of a white four-door car, heavily tinted with body damage on the front driver's side. Could this person be a link to the disappearance of Paloma and Malena Luke? This is the Luke's sister's story. I'm going to take you across the ocean to one of the 14 territories that is considered a U.S. Commonwealth, an island called Saipan, which is part of the Northern Mariana Islands. Saipan is the largest island of the Northern Mariana Islands in the Western Pacific Ocean. It was held by Spain, Germany, and Japan before it was captured by the U.S. troops in 1944 during World War II, and as part of the U.S. Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands from 1947 to 1978, it now serves as the capital of the Northern Marianas. Residents of all U.S. territories with permanent populations are American citizens. The population of Saipan is around 57,000. This is about two sisters, Valoma and Malena Luke, and the official language are English, Chamorro, and Carolinian. Many Philippine languages, Chinese, and other Pacific Island languages are also spoken, 
One of the language that is considered nearly extinct is Tanapak. Two sisters, Paloma and Malena Luke, were on their way to their bus stop, which was about 300 feet from their home, where they resided with their grandparents. Paloma, who was nine, and Malena, who was ten, had an arrangement with grandparents and their parents since 2007 to stay with Albert and grandmother while their parents were off working on other parts of the islands. Their mother, Germaine Quetiugua, lived in Guam, and their father, Ruthik Luke, lived in Micronesia. So Faloma and Malena lived with Albert and Jane, their grandparents. The couple began raising these sisters in 2007 after their biological parents left Saipan for better work opportunities. So on Wednesday, May 25, 2011, the two sisters headed towards their school bus stop, which was a cement slab, and waited for the bus at 6.30 to take them to Kagman Elementary School, but they never boarded the bus. One witness, a high school student, claimed to have seen the girls shortly after 6 a.m. as they walked by the bus stop. According to the witness, the girls were sitting on a slab of concrete across from the bus stop pavilion and were acting normal. The witness saw no other children or any other suspicious individuals. And by other accounts, the girls were not present once other children arrived at the bus stop or when the bus arrived at 6.30 a.m. The girls disappeared in a matter of minutes. The sisters were wearing a backpack. One was wearing a dark colored with the owner's name and telephone number written on the straps. And the other one, had a purple Dora the Explorer pack with writing on the shoulder straps, and these both backpacks disappeared along with the girls, and they have never been located. Paloma Luke, at the time of disappearance, weighed 90 pounds, 5 feet 1 inch, brown hair, brown eyes, last seen wearing a light green shirt with a butterfly design and jeans. Malena Luke, at the time of disappearance, weighed 65 pounds, was four feet tall, brown hair, brown eyes, last seen wearing a white blouse and jeans. She has a birthmark on her left cheek. Investigators searched for other possible witnesses and discovered a pair of garbage collectors who made a stop in Asteo every Wednesday morning. And they were familiar with Paloma and Malena because one of the garbage bins sat right behind the bus stop. And during this interview, the garbage collector confirmed they worked near the bus stop that morning between 5.45 a.m. to 5.55 a.m. And they did confirm that Paloma and Malena, as well as other children, were not at the bus stop when they worked. And they saw nothing out of the ordinary. However, they did provide one piece of valuable information. On May 11th, the garbage collector noticed the same gray Nissan pickup truck in the vicinity of the bus stop. The truck was parked near the gate of Santa Lord's Shrine with its high beam lights turned on. And on May 18th, the truck was driving in the direction of the bus stop. The garbage collectors did not see that truck on the morning of May 25th. However, it's unclear if the truck has any connection with Faloma or Marlena's case. When the girls never arrived after 3.30, Albert and Jane frantically called the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands Police or CNMI, and filed a missing persons report. Because of the girls' young ages, the case was handled as a potential criminal investigation. And right after, Albert and Jane reached out to their network of family and friends for help. The search efforts quickly began. And by nightfall, dozens of volunteers were combing through the surrounding area while others made flyers with Paloma and Malena's information to be distributed around the island. And despite their efforts, the girls were not found. 
The CNMI quickly asked the FBI for assistance, and hearing of the frightening details, the FBI agreed to take over the investigation, and within one week of the girl's disappearance, 20 FBI agents and staff support arrived in Saipan to aid the investigation. FBI Honolulu, Media Relations Coordinator and Special Agent Tom Simon set up a system of search dogs and began searching within that week. And because of the eyewitnesses of a male individual with a birthmark on his face, he was quickly interviewed and ruled out. Simon considered this the disappearance of the Luke sisters as a kidnapping case and based on and kidnapping is a federal crime. There was a little bit of correlations between the Luke sisters' disappearance and the 1998 disappearance, Rosaline Santos Camacho. However, Simon ruled out that these cases were not connected. What Simon was referencing to was the mysterious disappearance of Rosaline Santos Camacho. Rosaline was 33 when she was reported missing on August 23, 1998 in Saipan. Her husband Francisco San Nicolas Camacho was then a police detective and now is retired. The family strongly believed that this was a cover-up in the investigation because of Rosaline's husband being a former police detective. According to Santos' brothers, Antonio and Albert Santos, Rosaline had a fight with her husband. That's why she left their house and stayed with her sister in Cobblerville. Unfortunately, that Saturday night in August of 1998, Rosaline borrowed a Toyota Camry of her sister's and left the house in Cobblerville to never return home. I do have her story. Link in the show notes. August 15, 2011. Pieces of clothing a young girl's underwear, and a pair of Zoris, which are flip-flops, were found. Albert, Jane, and Jermaine were briefed by an FBI agent at the scene. In the interview, Albert was shown pieces of clothing, but he was not able to identify them. He could not say if they belonged to his missing granddaughters. A medical doctor was brought to the scene to also confirm that there was remains found in a grassy lot on Puteng Drive and were confirmed to be human, according to Department of Public Safety Commissioner Ramon Mafnas and the Federal Bureau of Investigation Special Agent Joseph Author. The bones were tested for DNA. They were confirmed that they appeared to be perhaps three to four weeks old. Special Agent Joseph Author mentioned that if any of these remains belong to one of the missing girls, there is a possibility they were kept alive for several weeks after their disappearance. Relatives of the girls were at the scene that day, but they could not confirm if the pieces of the clothing belonged to the sisters. And the size of the flip-flops were too big to belong to any of the girls. And because only one set of remains was found, authors stated that it's conceivable that the second victim might still be alive somewhere, he said. And at that time, the search and investigation continued. Mafnas requested the community remain vigilant and report anything that appears to be unusual. As they continued to investigate the area, there was more bones found and seemed to have been scattered by an animal. Sadly, weeks later, these bones were confirmed. The remains were of those of an elderly man, about 70 years old, Albert's brother, Ricardo Muno Cotugua. The lot where most of the remains were found has been abandoned for many years, according to neighbors. The house on the lot is barely visible from the road because many trees surround it. Located on Puteng Drive, the house is owned by the family of Tina Concepcion Pangelinon and is just a couple of blocks away from the road where a teenager was abducted by a group of men in a rape case in 2010. Responding officers later found other bones near the abandoned house. 
Another leg bone was found from another private backyard. Paul Cruz, who lives about a block away, said his dog brought home a leg bone around 7 o'clock on that Sunday, which he prompted to call the police immediately. And responding officers later found out that there was other bones near the abandoned house. Another leg bone was found from another private backyard. And another backbone and rib cage were found by Cruz's brother, Nicholas, behind a boonie area, just in front of the abandoned residence. Paul, who I mentioned before, he identified to the reporters that it, the bone that his dog had found looks to have been, quote, chewed off, unquote. And other dogs in the neighborhood found other bones, more bones. And so the police arrived in that area around 9 o'clock a.m. on that Sunday. The brothers also mentioned that they noticed a foul odor coming from that area since last month and thought that someone was throwing out leftovers from a barbecue party or a dead animal. There was also plastic trash bags that appeared to have been dug up by dogs. Nicholas also found a blue underwear with yellowish-orange stripe and a pair of jeans. He also found a white pair of flip-flops with red stripes. Throughout this time of the Luke sisters and their disappearance over a decade ago, there has been two person of interest, which was a former firefighter, Alan S. Aguan. Aguan was related to Luke's sister through marriage, and he was actually arrested on May 8th of 2012 on felony charges of assaulting and threatening his wife and son in Bury in Washington State. And in February of 2018, nearly seven years after the girl's abduction, the FBI announced that there was a new lead in the case, a possible convicted sex offender and killer, Joseph Acosta Crisostomo, could have been responsible for the abduction of the Luke sisters. And because of this tip, this person claimed that shortly after the sisters' abduction, they were murdered by Crisostomo and who buried their bodies under his parents' house in Coblerville. However, this was ruled out because Crisostomo was already serving a life sentence for 2012 rape and murder of Emerita Romero. Some people have questioned whether he has a link to the Luke sisters, if these are his first victims. And given the proximity of Coblerville, to Asteo, it seemed possible. However, those close to Crisostomos claimed that he had already been in prison for a different crime when the abduction occurred and could not have been by Joseph. Despite the passage of time, the memory of the two girls still live. Every 25th of May, the Diocese of Chalan Canoa holds the annual Mass of Remembrance in honor of the girls. The diocese expressed how they hoped the Mass would lead to, quote, resolution, enlightenment, and ultimately peace, unquote, in the community, regardless whether the case was solved. In 2021 interview with Saipan Tribune, Albert Kutukwa, Paloma and Malena's grandfather, one of the last people to see both of them alive, says that the anniversary is still a painful day, but continues to hope and pray that someday, out there, someone will come forward. Albert still lives in the same house where he raised the girls, only 300 feet from where they disappeared. This year, Paloma would have turned 21, and Malena would have been 20 years old. I want to end this episode sharing you a Chamorro proverb 
It is better to ask for something and be refused it than to give and not have it appreciated. There is a 25,000 reward. If you have any information regarding the abduction of Paloma and Malena Luke, please contact the Northern Mariana Islands Department of Public Safety at 670-234-6006 or the FBI Saipan office at 670-322-6934. Thank you for listening to Hands Off My Podcast. If you are enjoying the podcast and you'd like to support the mission, I do have a Patreon membership that will help the cause and bring more detail on cases and stories from the people of color community. If you yourself has a lost loved one or a story suggestion, please don't hesitate to contact me at email. Handsoffmypodcast at gmail.com and if you are only able to support in another way, please give this podcast a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify and continue to listen to upcoming episodes every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcast. Dios te bendiga.